Hey friends, how's it going and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk to you about this library called the Floating Panel, which I thought, which I thought could be quite useful for certain applications. So I want to show you how you can actually set this up. And I've already got a demo that's over here. So as you can see, this is a view controller, a really plain one with a button that says toggle as well as a, a label over here that says none. So when I hit on this button, the toggle button, I'm going to launch the floating panel and I'm going to show you how uh, the view controller can actually interact with this floating panel. Okay, so I'm going to click on toggle right now and notice that I have this floating panel that's uh, showing up at the bottom and I'm able to slide this to the to the midpoint. I'm able to bring it all the way to the top as well and then it kind of snaps to the, um, to the ankle. Okay, so as you can see, uh, when I hit on the toggle button, I'm able to also configure this to move up and down, okay, depending on which uh, anchors I want it to be snapped to. And also, most importantly, I'm able to interact with this uh, view over here. So over here, this view is actually a, um, a table view controller. Okay, it's a bit uh, this is a bit distracting. So let me just bring this out of the way. <clears throat> so actually, when I tap on uh, any of these items over here, I'm, I'm able to actually send this information back to the main view controller. So option B, option C, I can just go up to option F and then just bring it down to the bottom as well. All right. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build this uh, from scratch. And I'm going to show you how you can integrate this uh, library into a blank uh, Xcode project. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to integrate the project into um, Swift Package Manager. So I'm going to copy the URL over here at the top. And then uh, let's come to the brand new uh, Xcode project. It's completely new. There's nothing inside the main storyboard. Uh, and the view controller, it's, it's a blank piece. Okay, so let's just integrate the library first. So let's come here. Let's go over to project, package dependencies, hit the plus button, and then I'll just paste that inside this, um, this text field here. And then typically I like to choose up to next minor version so that you get kind of like the latest version. So hit the add package button. And we just have to wait for a while for the floating panel to be downloaded into our Xcode project. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait for a while and cut to the part when uh, this, okay, it looks like it's, it's here already. Okay, so if you're working with multiple targets, you're allowed to select the different target. But since this is a demo project, it has only one target. I'm going to add this into the main target over here. So hit the add package. Okay, so now let's work uh, with the view controller. So I have my finishing product over here. So this is the finished product. So I'm going to, you know, walk you through uh, or rather to code line by line so that you kind of understand uh, how we are, you can do this on your own as well and you understand the thought process. Okay, so obviously the first thing we want to do is to import uh, the library, which is floating panel. And then we want to create an instance of this floating panel. So let's do that uh, all, all the way to the top. So I'm going to create a private function here, sorry, a private variable here. So a private lazy variable, FPC, uh, floating panel controller. And the reason why I'm using lazy variable is because uh, I need to uh, set its delegate to the view controller itself. Okay, so floating panel controller. Okay, let's do it this way. So let controller equals to floating flo floating panel controller. Okay, okay, I'm not sure why this is not showing up correctly. But anyway, so uh, like that, and then we're going to set this to be the self and then let return controller just like that. So let me do command B to build this to ensure that everything is working correctly. Okay, so it's going to complain because we have to conform to the uh, the protocol, which is the floating panel controller delegate. So maybe I'm just going to just put it over here. And then uh, maybe just do a mark over here to just indicate that uh, the, the protocol functions will come at the bottom. Okay, so command B to build, I believe this should work. Okay, so what we want to do is also to define um, what is the content inside this a floating panel controller okay so over here i'm going to create a table view uh, controller so this would represent uh, let me see you represent this information inside uh, the floating panel okay so let me just scroll to that part and then let's create a table view so i'm going to call this table view controller and then ui table view controller so very straightforward Okay, so uh, I'm going to create a bunch of items over here. So let items will be an array of string. Okay, so I'm going to maybe I'm just going to copy everything inside so that I don't have to just type everything like that. Okay, and then I'm going to do number of rows, uh, number of rows in section, I'm going to return items.count. And then uh, I'm going to do a height for 
uh, row at I'm gonna return 80 again you can specify whatever uh, values that you want but I'm just putting in some hard-coded values so that we, we just want to get the example out okay so sell for row at okay so sell for row at this will be the uh, view over here so this will be the table view cell so let's uh, create the cell uh, equals to UI table view cell and then for the style I'm gonna use default uh, reuse identifier nail just return the cell okay return the cell just like that and then I want to also um, put in the text inside the cell. So text uh, label dot text equals to um, items index path dot item just like that. And then I also want to create some kind of color to differentiate the different cells. Okay, so as you can see, it's a bit of a lighter gray, a darker gray, a lighter gray, a darker gray. So that um, okay, what's the problem here? I think I need to put the question mark here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is cell dot um, content view dot background color I'm going to check uh, if index path modulus uh, modulus 2 equals to 0 so basically what this does is that uh, you know I'm going to alternate the different colors so system gray 6 otherwise a system gray 5 I think I think they should work okay command B to build is everything okay uh, equals to index path dot item my bad command B um the dot color equals to oh uh, what is the problem maybe let me just copy this over here index path command b one more time to build this it should be good now i i, I don't know what i i misspelled but anyway this is how it's supposed to be okay and then finally i think uh yeah i think that's pretty much all i need okay so what i'm going to do over here at the top part is i'm going to define this table view controller okay so let um let, let me just call this content vc equals to table view controller let's initialize this and then i'm going to do controller uh sorry I, i'm going to do controller uh, dot set content view controller would be this one over here okay and then i have to do another property controller dot track uh, scroll view and this will be the content vc dot table view Okay, and then finally, I'm going to include this additional property dot is removable interaction enabled. Okay, so if you set this to be true, then you won't be able to fully dismiss down all the way to the bottom. But if you do not set this property or you set this to false, I believe you're able to dismiss this entirely. Okay, so now that we have this floating panel controller, we have to add this inside um, our, our view, correct? So maybe let's create a uh, layout function over here. So private func layout and then inside here i have to um, let me see add this inside the the uh, the view controls view so fpc floating panel controller dot add panel uh, to parent okay let's do a self and then i can do fp uh, i think this this is all, all i think this is all we need and then we can just call the layout function over here so i believe this should at least show up something at least we will see the panel with um with some values over here so as you can see yeah we already have this uh, straight away so pretty pretty cool so as you can see i dismissed this and uh there isn't really a way to to bring it up okay so i would um uh i would encourage you not to uh to set this oh, oh, hold on let me see uh, not to set this to true so set this to false I, I believe there's a way to bring it up but i, I haven't really explored how to do that yet so uh, meanwhile i'm going to set this to be false okay so you you won't be able to bring this down and you'll always uh, stay there hi developers i want to introduce you to my brand new course that i've created this year in 2023 this is the ios and swift mvvm combined snap kit snapshot ui and unit test course all right so this is all the skills that you need to become a senior ios engineer and i've created this course to share all the knowledge that i've acquired for the past seven years so if you are a developer with two or three years of experience look no further because this course is going to supercharge your skills to land that senior developer role i will provide promo links in the video description so do check it out okay right now i'm going to create the buttons as well as the labels to show how we can actually interact with this table view inside the floating uh, panel controller okay so let's start by creating a uh, button okay so let's call this a toggle button so private lazy var toggle button and this will be of type ui button Okay, so let button equals to UI button, and then uh, let's create, let's add a configuration of field. And what this does is that it makes this a blue button. Okay, so return button, and then uh, let's do button.setTitle. Let's call this toggle, 
and then for normal okay and let's not forget since we're gonna do uh, auto layout so we're gonna do translate auto resizing mods into constraints let's set this to false okay so over here I'm going to do um, toggle button uh, dot for each I'm going to do view dot add sub views and the reason why I do this uh, putting that inside an array is because I want to add the label in as well so maybe let's just do that uh, over here so private lazy var uh, label UI label okay uh, let label equals to UI label return the label let's initialize this and then we also want to set the font so label dot uh, font equals to system font of size let's do 30 and bold and then label dot text so uh, the default text let me just set this as none so as we select the uh, the content inside this uh, table view we are going to uh, update this label okay so that we know that things are changing okay and then uh, finally uh, label dot translate auto resizing mask into constraints let's add this to false okay so now that i have the toggle button and the label i can just uh, you know put a comma here and just paste this in so that we add both of these elements into the views uh, sub view okay so now we need to do some auto layout so ns layout constraints dot activate Okay, so this is an array so i'm going to put the button just uh, at the top so toggle button dot top ankle dot constraint equals to view dot save uh, area save area layout guide dot top ankle and then i'm going to have some padding of 64 i don't think i need this right uh, panel here so let's just remove it and then toggle button dot uh, center uh, x ankle dot constraint equals to view dot center x angle okay so i believe uh, by doing this i should see the toggle button just somewhere at the top over here so let me just wait for that to happen all right so we have a toggle button here uh, clicking on this nothing really happens okay so now we want to put the um the label as well so label dot top ankle dot constraint equals to uh toggle button dot um dot bottom ankle and then let's have some uh some padding as well let's do 40 and then finally, I think I can do label dot center x ankle dot constraint equals to a view dot center x ankle so that uh, both of these elements is on the um, it's on the middle part of the x axis. All right, so let's run this, and I believe we should see the label somewhere below the button. All right, none, which is great. Okay, so now we are done with the auto layout for this um, button and view. The question is that how are we going to interact? with these uh, elements over here all right so it's very similar if you have you know worked with sub views before you know you create your own custom views what we can do uh, a more straightforward way would be to create some kind of closure over here if you want to do a delegate that's completely fine as well so maybe i'm going to do did select and then um, i'm going to pass in uh, the the um, the data type that's this will be a string okay so uh, now inside the uh, table view controller, I'm going to do the did select uh, row, uh, did select item add, and then I'm going to do did select, and then over here I'm going to do index. Uh, oops, I need to get the data source, which is items, index path dot item. Okay, just like that. So what I'm going to do over here. Let's come to the main view controller, and then I'm going to do uh, content vc, which is the table view controller. I can do dot did select. Okay, so something like that, and then I, I can do like a item, okay, item in, and I know that this item is of type string. Why is that? Because uh, this, I've specified type string over here, okay? So you can either do it this way, or I think you can also do it this way, but it's, it's really not really necessary. Okay, then I want to reference the label over here, so I know that I'm in a closure, and I could potentially create a retain cycle, so let's use a weak variable over here. So self.label.text equals to item. All right, I think that's all the code that we need. So let me just run this and see if this is working. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so when I click on A, B, C, D, E, notice that um, this thing is showing up as well. I'm not sure why this is <laughs> not covering the entire thing. But anyway, let's, uh, let's now work with the... Um, let's now... Okay, I think... Uh, why is it not covering everything? I'm not, I'm not really sure. But let's work with the, uh, the, the toggle button right now, okay? So I'm going to create a function um, at the bottom over here to uh, handle the button tap event. Okay, so button did tap, just like that. And let's not forget to make this an Objective-C function. Okay, so inside uh, where over here, let's do button dot add target self selector 
uh, button, the tab. Okay, I think it's like that, and then touch up inside. Okay, so what we want to do over here is that we can actually configure the uh, the floating panel controller to move to several um, what what do we call this? Several ankles, I think, several states. Okay, so let me just show it to you what I mean by that. So I can actually switch through the FPC dot state. So if you notice that, what is this state? Uh, this state is an enum, I believe, inside the library. And then let's just have a look at what, what we have inside over here. We have, um, let's see, a, a full, half, tip, and hidden. Okay, I think there's more, but uh, let's just work with this first. Okay, so let me just hit back. And then I can do case uh, full, uh, or rather let's, let's work with half first, half. And then let's do a hidden. And then uh, there's a tip as well. So tip is basically uh, just right over here. So this is the tip state just at the tip of the view controller. All right. So uh, I'm going to do a default over here. So uh, any other states so we can just uh, break. So if it's half, when 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 the panel is, is halfway and I tap on this uh, toggle button, I want it to fully cover the top. All right. So this is again custom customizable. And the way to do that is to do fcp.move to all right, so we can select a state. Okay, so I'm going to set this to full. And then for animator, I'm going to set this to true. And then in the event, if it's hidden, I don't think it will be hidden anymore. But anyway, let me just, just bring this to tip and then true. And then fcp.move, let's go to half. Okay, so if it's at the tip level, we're going to make this half. Okay, so let me just run this right now. And uh, let's see what we have over here. Okay, so uh, if I bring this to the tip and I tap on the toggle, it's going to move to uh, half. All right, and uh, it, uh, when I tap this one more time, it's going to move to the full state. All right, so just like that. Okay, again, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure why this is not fully covering this. Uh, I might have to uh, debug this later. Okay, another thing that I want to show to you as well is that because I've already conformed to this, uh, I've conformed to the delegate um, protocol, I'm able to monitor also the different uh, states. So for example, did move, did, uh, let, me, let me see, um, floating panner, uh, did move. Oh, okay, over here. All right, so you can actually, you know, play around. If you have some further customization, you can uh, actually check for the state over here. So let me just, uh, you know what, um, in, inside the view deload, I can just hide this first. So let me show you to you how you can do that. Okay, so it's FCP dot uh, hide. Uh, let, let's do that again. Hide. Animated will be true. I don't need the completion block, so I think I can just remove this. Okay, so when I run the uh, when I run the the app, I'm not going to see the floating panel controller at the moment. Okay, so it's a hidden state right now. So notice that uh, if this is hidden, and if I hit on the toggle button, I'm going to move this to the tip state. All right, so let's do that right now. So hit it, it comes to the tip state again. If I tap on option A, I'm going to update this, and then if I hit on toggle button again, depending on the state it is, you know, I can uh, move this to the midpoint. And then finally, I can bring that all the way to the top. All right, guys, I hope that you find this uh, tutorial useful. Again, I'm not sure why this is not fully covering this. Uh, maybe I might have to adjust the, lay the layers or, you know, maybe set a background uh, color or something like that. Hey, guys, I kind of figured out why we're having this behavior right now. And that's because of the auto that we added those layers inside. Okay, so the way to fix this is to just bring this to the bottom. And then I believe this should work right now. Okay, so let me just run this one more time. And let's see that uh, the panel should be on top uh, and it will cover actually the uh, button as well as the label. Okay, so let's just check it out. And yes, that's the behavior we want. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this and uh, feel free to leave me any uh, comments uh, if needed. And I'll see you in the next video.